Hi, I'm Andrew Pierce, a Senior Systems Development Engineer at AWS, and today I'm going to be talking to you about EC2 Image Builder. This is a service designed to help you build and maintain secure images in the cloud. Now, as we know, organizations of all sizes are running their applications within the Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud, EC2, or they've containerized their applications run within the Amazon Elastic Container Service, ECS. Now, no matter which of these approaches are being taken, organizations want to build standardized images. They want to build their image once, build it, test it, validate it, and ship it to their downstream stages for use in production. What this means is that building an image is no longer differentiated work. Building an image is now standard and required, and that's where EC2 Image Builder comes in. With Image Builder, it's a managed offering to take care of those workflows for you, to simplify how you define your end-to-end -end image, and to make sure it's distributed amongst all of your accounts and regions you need. So what am I going to cover today? In today's session, I'll give a high-level overview of the service, how it works, what resources are needed, and how it can handle that end-to-end -end workflow. We'll dive in to the image creation workflow and what an image pipeline means, how you define your source, your build and test components, the infrastructure you want to build on, and how you distribute your output army everywhere you need it to go. I'll then do two demos. The first being focused more of a Windows Enterprise, where perhaps you have a single team that owns a core image. And from that core image, you want to share that to all of your application service teams, who can use it downstream as the source of their pipelines. This is how you can build a cascading image environment, allowing each team to own their piece of the puzzle while ensuring you meet your organization's requirements. In the second demo, I'll build an Ubuntu Docker container that can be used within ECS. Now for both of these, I'll use the same .NET application to run in the demonstration, and I'll demonstrate them in two different ways. Firstly, I'll use the AWS console to build the Windows infrastructure. I think using the console will give you a more clear understanding of how the different resources in Image Builder work together. And for the Ubuntu Docker container, I'll build that using CloudFormation. Now for both of these, we will have source available on our GitHub repository, which will be linked at the end, for you to go and find and work through the examples in your own time. So let's talk about the service itself. As I've said, Image Builder really is designed to simplify your processes for building, testing, and deploying virtual machine and contain images. It does this by allowing you to define all of the resources needed, the pipeline, what components you want to install and configure, how to distribute those components, and what infrastructure to run it all on. The image pipeline is where you define all of those pieces joined together. You can trigger these manually, you can trigger them on a schedule, or even better, you can trigger them only when there's a change to the underlying source image or component that you're installing. Now an image pipeline includes both a build and a test phase, and this really becomes the critical piece. Not only do we want to build the image and install it with all of your applications and software configurations, but we want to test it to make sure it will actually work when we start shipping it downstream. And now this is key when we think about distribution. There's no point distributing an image across 20 accounts if we know the image won't work. And so we may as well perform that testing during the pipeline to make sure we're not distributing a bad artifact. Now, when it comes to distribution, this has often been another challenge. Organizations may be running hundreds of AWS accounts, or they may be running in many different AWS regions. With Image Builder, each pipeline can be configured with its own distribution requirements. And at the end of the pipeline, assuming the image has exceeded, Image Builder will distribute the image to all of those defined accounts and regions for you. This can save considerable overhead for you as you don't need to build a custom orchestration engine to do this work. So if we dive in a little bit more to the image creation workflow, we'll understand a bit more of how these tie together. First, we need to start with a source image. That image may be an AWS managed image, such as the Windows armies that are released each month, or an Ubuntu image, or an Amazon Linux 2 image, but at the end of the day, we need a source image. Now, the other thing you can do here is import your own. You can import your own image using the VM import and export service and utilize the output army from that 
as the input to your Image Builder pipeline. This allows you to bring your own. You can take an on-premises image that you have today, import it into EC2 Image Builder, and use that for all future builds going forwards. This allows a nice easy way to bring your own applications and your own environments into the cloud. Now once we have a source image, we need to define what to install and what to test. Now a recipe is where you define the list of components to build and the list of components for testing your application server. Now a component is a declarative YAML document where you define the steps required to install or configure an application. It's a plain text format that is very simple to understand. Now to build and test an image, we need to launch an instance. So you define the instance using an infrastructure configuration. With this, you can tell the service where to launch your image into what VPC, using which subnet and which security group. You can define what instance type you need. So perhaps you only need a small instance or maybe you need a GPU attached. You get to define what your instance requirements are. You can also configure an output SNS topic for notifying yourself or your team of when a build has succeeded or failed. You can configure the service to use an EC2 key pair or to keep the instance running when it fails. So you can go and troubleshoot and deep dive what went wrong. Now once we've built our image and we've tested the image and made sure it works, we can now distribute the image. This is where distribution configuration is supplied. Now a distribution configuration is where you define your accounts, regions, Elastic Container Registries, and everywhere that you need to ship that image once its build has been successful. And now in addition to all of this, these operations do run in your account, so you have full control over the security posture of that build. You can build it into a private VPC that is only using VPC endpoints, or you can build it into a public VPC if you so desire. So let's talk about demos. We'll start with an AWS console demo of building a Windows baseline image. So here we are in the EC2 image builder page in the AWS console. Now to get here, you can find it under services, compute and EC2 image builder. Or you can search for it in the search bar to find EC2 image builder again. Now this is the typical landing page for when you first come to the service. And we're going to use this create image pipeline to just get started. So first thing we'll do is we'll give our pipeline a name. So I'll call it Summit Demo 2021. Description, baseline, Windows image. That'll do. We'll keep the enhanced metadata collection turned on, which will use Systems Manager inventory to collect the metadata from the image. And this can be used to help verify uh, compatibility for components and images downstream. Next thing we define is a build schedule. So we have a schedule builder here to make this nice and easy. You can enter your own cron expression. It can simply say manually. But for today, I'm going to set this to run every day at 9 a.m. UTC. Now this is where we can select whether we want to run the pipeline every time this cron expression occurs or whether we want to run it every time the current expression occurs, but only when there's a change in the source image or in one of the components. Now, this being the baseline, I want this to run every week. I want to make sure that every week I have a new image that would have the latest Windows updates installed if there are any available. So I'm going to leave this on that setting. We can configure some tags here. So I'll say summit demo and we'll move to the next page. On this screen, we'll define our image recipe. So this is where we will select the underlying source image and where we will select all the components that we want to use to build and test our image. So for this one, I'm going to select a new image because I want to create a new one. We'd we'll select between an army or a Docker image. I want an army. This is my summit demo recipe, Windows baseline. I am going to say this is version 1.0. And the recipe can have a description. So again, about Windows baseline for PowerShell Summit demo. And we'll scroll down.
So the next thing to select is our source image. So we can select from a managed image, which is images that are imported into Image Builder automatically. Or you can select your own custom army if you have a specific source image you want to use. For this one, I will select a custom image. Now I'm going to select Windows. Now that we've selected that I want a Windows image, we can select where we want the image to come from. So I can select from those provided by Amazon or I can select images created by me. So these would be images built by a previous pipeline or images that have been shared with me. So for this demonstration, we'll use an Amazon managed image. And we'll select which one we want. Now you can see from the list that we have all the standard Windows images available. Uh, for this, I'm gonna pick a 29 image. So Windows Server 2019 English full base. We can also select whether to use the latest version, a specific version, in which case we can select which release of this image we want, or a specific OS version by the semantic version. So this version would match with the versions you just saw in this drop down. But this is our baseline. We want this to just be always up to date, always using the latest, and so that's what we're going to select. If you have a custom requirement for a working directory, you can select that here. For now, I'm just going to leave the defaults. We'll come down to our components. So this is where we select our build components. Now these are the things we want to install on the box or configure on the box. And we have an option here to choose from those provided by Amazon or those you've built yourself. You can simply change the drop down to choose between the options. I'm going to select a series of Amazon managed images and we'll talk about the build components during the next part of the demonstration. So for this one, I'm just going to choose the AWS CLI and maybe PowerShell. So in here, oops, I hit space. Let's come back. So the AWS CLI, version two, great. I'm gonna pick PowerShell on the latest version seven release. And we're going to pick update windows because we want to make sure Windows is always up to date. Okay, so next we can pick which version of these components that we would like. Now by default, the latest version will always be used. But you can expand the versioning here and choose something more specific. So perhaps for PowerShell, I'll give an example. So by default, x.x.x .x .x will be the latest of any version. If I wanted to say 7.1.x, that would clearly install the component with version 7.1.anything. Now, if I select off this, that actually won't be available. So this will validate if that's available before it allows you to choose it. So I'm gonna say 7.x.x to indicate that I want the latest 7.x release of PowerShell. I'm also gonna move update windows first. So we'll get that out of the road and updating first. So these are the build components I want. I want these on every image that I build off this one. And next is to choose those test components. So we've chosen our build. We'll come down to the tests. So the test components are those that will be run on the machine after the army has been created. So the service will launch our source image we've selected. It will run all of the build components to install all our applications and configurations it will then take an image of the machine. And at that point, we do have an army available. The service will then launch a new instance from that army to run the test components. So this is where you can validate that the image that's being created actually works and actually does what it's intended to do. Now for this example, I'm going to pick just a few of these. So let's pick a Windows activation test. So I want to make sure that Windows will be activated correctly and we'll pick a simple boot test, which will just make sure the system can No, we won't do that actually. Let's select a reboot test. I want to make sure the reboot can actually, sorry, I want to make sure the system can actually reboot. Great. The last thing to select on this page is our storage volumes. So we could choose to use any volume type, GP2, GP3. We could select to use our own custom KMS encryption key if we wanted this encrypted. Uh, we could choose a new EBS volume. 
if we wanted to have this image having multiple volumes available. I'm just going to use the defaults. The next thing we need to define is the infrastructure. So now we've selected what our source image will be, what we want to install on the machine and how we want to test the machine. Now we need to select how to launch the machines for this work. So I could just use the defaults, but I'm going to create a new infrastructure configuration and walk through what's available to us. So Windows Baseline Infrastructure. Now we do need to select an IAM role. So by default, there are some managed uh, policies provided by Image Builder that ensure you can have the minimum or, or the required policies to get the components and do the, the baseline work that's needed. We also need the uh, SSM roles applied because we do use Systems Manager to make calls to our machine. So I've created one here previously called the Inst EC2 instance profile for image builder. So we're going to use that. Under AWS infrastructure, this is where we can pick the instance types we want to launch and other things. So if you had a specific requirement where you needed a GPU, uh, you could select a GPU instance type here. Now the system or the service will pick some defaults for you if you don't choose any, and I'm just going to go with those defaults. You could choose an SNS topic if you wanted notifications when the build changes state, when it moves into a success or failure state, for example. You can select your own custom VPC. If you want to, if you want to launch this image into a custom private VPC or any other VPC configuration you've already got in your account. I won't choose that, but under troubleshooting settings, I am going to change a couple of these now I'm going to turn this terminate instance on failure off. So if something does go wrong in this build, the instance will still be running in my account and I'll to give me the possibility to log onto it and troubleshoot what troubleshoot what's happened. By default that won't occur. So by default the instance if it fails will just turn off and the only thing you have available to you is the logs from the system. Now I am going to choose a key pair. So this key pair will let me log onto the machine and get a password if I need to. So that's relatively important. And I'm also going to choose an S3 bucket. This is where uh, we can publish our logs. So I'm going to enter my bucket in here, which is a demo bucket I've created for this purpose. Give it a proper S3 URI. And what this will mean is every time that this image is built, the logs at the end of execution will be published into this bucket. And we could give it a tag if we want. I'm not going to bother. Let's move on to the distribution settings. So at this point now, let's walk through it. We've built, we've selected our source image. We've selected our build components and our test components. We've selected the infrastructure that I want to use to launch my images for testing. And now we're selecting what to do once the image is complete. So the assumption here is that my image has built, it has been tested. We now have an army that we are happy with that's passed all our tests. And now what do I do with that army? Where do I put it? Do I just leave it in this account or do I publish it to other accounts and regions to make it available there? So for this, I'm going to create a new distribution. I'm going to call it my Windows Baseline Distro. And this is where we could enter those target accounts on a name for the army. So I'm going to pick a name of Windows Baseline Demo. I'm not going to select any other accounts. We can also apply other things here, for example, army sharing. You could share the army with other accounts. Or license configurations. You could apply a license manager configuration to this army once it's completed. Or a launch template. You can create an auto scaling group that works off a launch template. And so the output of an image builder pipeline can actually update your launch template for you, which can then trigger auto scaling group rot um, rotations. So this can be completely plugged into an auto scaling group uh, end to end every time a new image is built. So that's pretty cool. We can add regions here, so I can do the same things for another region, but I won't. And we're just gonna move on and we're gonna select this. We now get a summary page 
where I can actually review all of the configurations I've made. And I'm happy with all these configurations. I have my pipeline, have my image recipe, my infrastructure and my distribution. We'll create this pipeline. Right, we can see lots of creations have occurred and I now have a new pipeline in here, which is my Summit Demo 2021. And we can go into this and trigger the pipeline. So this will run on the cron schedule I've defined. However, for the purposes of demos, I wanted to trigger this right now. So this is the, the way you can do that in the console. Right, you can hit actions, run the pipeline, and I'll have this new image that is pending creation and should run through that end-to-end -end build process. Now, instead of waiting for this to complete, I've done the typical demo work where I've pre-built a bunch of things so I can move on to the second part of this cascading image demo uh, without waiting for this to finish. And this build is likely going to take around 25 minutes by the time the instance is launched, all the things have been installed, it's turned itself off, an image has been created, it's launched the new instance, it's run my test components, it turns it off, and then it distributes it and tags the images correctly based on the, the settings I've defined. So that end to end is likely to take around 25 to 30 minutes for a Windows machine. So instead of waiting for that, let's move on to the second part of this demo. So assuming this image has worked, we will now have a new baseline Windows image for my enterprise that I can use as the source for a new image. So this could be a, an application team now. So I'm gonna say I'm a .NET application team. I run a .NET web application and I'm going to use this baseline image as my source for building my .NET application. So I'm going to create a new pipeline and let's do that. So you can see I've already got this .NET website here which is the same thing. Uh, this is the one I've deployed earlier, but we'll do this from scratch so you can walk through that process again. This time around though, I will show you the custom component and how the components look and how we've selected this different source image. So we'll say this is my .NET website demo. I'll move a little bit quicker over this this time around. I'm gonna say build this at 11 a.m. UTC to make sure my previous image exists. And this time around, I'm also only gonna build this when there is a dependency change. So if I haven't updated my website and if there's no new source image available, then there's probably not much need for me to build a new image. So this time I do wanna say only build the image when a dependency has been updated. And we'll move on. Again, I'm going to create a new recipe here. This is my .NET website demo, version one is great. This is a Windows image. Now the difference here is instead of choosing the Amazon managed image, I'm going to choose an image that's owned by me. And I'm going to choose my Windows Server baseline. So this is the baseline image that I've created previously that I know there is an image available for because it's been built correctly. And same thing, I can use the latest version of this or I can use a selected version at this point. There's only one version available. I'll use the latest. So this is now saying I have a baseline image that's been built by from the Amazon managed Windows image. And that image is now becoming the source of this pipeline. And so this will automatically trigger both pipelines kind of once builds have been completed. We'll move down to components. And this time around, I'm going to choose a .NET component. So I want to choose the runtime component, which is not showing up. So we'll refresh this list just to be sure. Let's just scroll through. So this time I want the .NET Core runtime bundle. No, I do not, that's version three. It's not called .NET Core anymore, it's just .NET. So we're going to choose the .NET runtime. I also want a custom component that I've built. So show me the components owned by me, and this time around I'm going to choose both of these. So let's go have a look at what these actually do and kind of how we define a custom component. 
So the first one here will install an SSM, which is an application that I can use to create a custom Windows service. And the second one will install my .NET website, which is a .NET 5 application compiled for Windows. And I'm going to install that executable that will listen for web traffic using NSSM as a Windows service. So I'm going to show you what this NSSM one looks like. So you can see what a, a component looks like, what the YAML format is. So I'm going to open in a new tab. The components. And we'll go into this .NET website NSSM. And I'm full screen, so you can't actually see my tabs, but I did actually create a new tab. So now we have a component. Now, if we scroll down, we can see the content of this. And let's, we'll zoom in a little bit to make it a little bit bigger for you. We can see that this is a YAML document that is nice and clean and easy to read. And we have these constants of define. So these are values that are never going to change. And we have our source and we have these different phases available to us. So there's actually three phases available to us in this document. One's called build, which lines up very nicely with our build phase of our image. We have one called test, which as you can imagine, lines up very cleanly with the test phase of, test phase of our image. Now the third one is actually called validate, and this will run after the build phase. This is primarily a logical separation uh, more than anything else. So when the build phase runs for every component you've selected, the build phase will be executed and then the validate phase will be executed for one component and then the next component will be executed. So this is more of a logical separation so you can do your installations during build, then validate that during the validate stage. And then you can have that test phase that runs after the image has been built the first time around. So with this format in my build phase, we have a series of different steps here. One of the actions is called execute PowerShell. So this will execute the PowerShell script as defined. Now you can see these double curly braces and source. What the application will do is at runtime, when it gets up to executing this step, this value will be replaced by the value of my source. So this is how we can kind of create variables to be used throughout uh, a document. Now we can also see in this web download, this will just download a file from our website and stick it in my de destination. And you can see this slightly different format, which we've called chaining. And this is how we can take the output of a step and utilize it as the input of another step. So in this case, this will come from the build phase this step called zip file, the output of that step, or an output of that step, the output name is standard out. And so you can see from this that we have a join path. This will reflect essentially C slash windows slash temp slash NSSM 2.24, given the splitting we're doing above. So you can see this format is very similar to other document formats you've likely seen if you've used something such as Ansible, uh, but it is it is custom to Image Builder and it is quite simple to understand though. You now if I scroll down, you see there's not a whole lot else happening here. Uh, we're going to execute it using Expand Archive. We'll find the location of the folder. Uh, so this zip file happens to have a nested folder in it. So this is uh, the process to find that nested folder. I'll move the folder to where I want it to be installed and I'll update the path, the, the machine's path variable with this location so I can use that uh, elsewhere. Now I will also reboot to ensure that the environment path variable has been updated. And so the reboot action here uh, will handle that reboot for me. And after the reboot, the execution will continue from where it left off. So none of these previous steps will be executed now the build will just move on to the next thing. Quick little segue to the documents page. So I can, you can see what other things we have available, or at least you'll see where to go uh, to find the documentation in future. So if I search for AWS Image Builder documentation, this first link will give me 
take me to the image builder documentation. I can go into the user guide. Now under component manager, you'll find all of the documentation around these components and how they work. So this includes things like the looping capabilities that are there and the action modules are where you'll see all the different things that are built in that can be done for you. Uh, for example, if I go to file system operations, there's a whole range of different operations here specific to moving files on disk and doing standard file operations. So this is where you'll find all the documentation around the action modules and you will likely will need to come here when you're building your own components. So I've shown you the documentation, close that tab. Uh, I've shown you kind of how a custom client works, so what the document format looks like. Great, you can do more reading there when you need to. Let's come back to the pipeline I was creating for that .NET application. So close that tab too. Zoom out again and move on. So we've built, we've selected rather, our components that we want. So we've selected this .NET runtime. We've selected the .NET website NSSM to install the NSSM service. And we've in selected our website installation, which will install our .NET website. Perhaps you want to see that actually. Why don't we show you that? We'll show you uh, what that looks like as well. It's slightly different from the previous one. So let's quickly go in there. Okay, so this one is relatively similar. Uh, we have some constants. Now this is just some paths I've used for where the source is. I've got the binary name, it will be hello PowerShell summit.exe. I'm gonna call it the .NET website demo. Uh, we're going to listen on TCP 5000. So this will be so I can configure a firewall port. And this is going to be used in a test phase where we'll actually call the website and make sure it's actually functioning and available. So if we scroll down, a lot of this is very similar. And you'll see I'm using S3 download action here. A delete folder and a create folder. We're going to keep scrolling down and sort of get to the next phases that we have. I just need to scroll my entire page. Okay, so we can see here now that we actually have a validate phase that we're using, and we're using a test phase as well. So as I mentioned, we'll run the build phase on the, for this component that will install my web application. And now for the validate phase, we're just going to call into the local machine on local host on my TCP port and validate using your regex that a specific string exists within the title of the HTML. And so this is where we can make sure we're failing the build if it isn't correct, but we're also passing the build if it is correct. So that's really what I want to show you here, that we can exit with a non-zero exit code to force a build failure uh, if something was to go wrong. Now we'll go back to the pipeline. So this is our pipeline. Now there's really not much else to show here in terms of what I was going to do. I was simply going to move on through next, next, next and build this out. So we'll just move through here and build this out. I'm going to say, give me an infrastructure configuration for this one. I'm not going to select. No, we do need to. I'm going to say to use a pre-built one. Uh, this actually needs S3 permissions to download these artifacts from S3. And so I know that this was deployed through my CloudFormation template um, from the GitHub repository. And so I know it will work. So we'll just select this infrastructure config, which has a specific IAM role with the policies needed. So we'll move, select that. I'm not going to distribute this anywhere. So the service can create me a default distribution setting. And we'll approve this and create the pipeline. And as before, we could come into here and build and trigger a build manually using the run pipeline. Okay, that will build. So at the end of this, I will have an output image, an output army that maps to this .NET web application. Now I'm not going to launch that, but I will also jump over to the EC2 console and just show you what that, where that output army is. So the EC2 console, I can come over under the left navigation here under images and armies. And we'll see that I have two created here. 
one was the baseline and one is a .NET application. So I could launch this and have a web server available to me. So now we'll move on to the second demo where I'll walk through a container uh, image. But we'll do this one by showing you the CloudFormation template of all the different resources involved to be able to create these from code. So this template will be essentially the same template as what will be available in our samples repository and you can walk through it in your own time. I'll walk through this, uh, I'll skip over the parameters a little bit quickly and get more to the resources because I think that's the key point of what I wanted to show you. So for the parameters I do have some, a subnet ID and a security group if you wanted to pick something specific. If not provided the default VPC will be used. And this template we are allowing the selection of an instance type. As I mentioned if in the service itself a default you know, instance type will be used if none is selected but for this we are selecting one. It's allowing you to define a target uh, repo uh, repository of where you want the image to go. Now this will create an Elastic Container Registry repository and place the container image into that repository when it's completed. You can also define custom image tags uh, to be applied to the container once it's built. So by default the build version, that 1.0.0 or 1.0.5, that will be used as an image tag on the container. But you can also apply a custom tag if you want, so I'm going to use latest to indicate the latest tag is always up to date on the latest build. Resource name and version are going to map to all of the image builder resources. Um, so they're standardized within this template. This source S3 zip file, which is actually a tar file, uh, will map to the source that I've compiled for the .NET application. It's essentially the exact same as I used for the previous demo and all the details of this will also be in the GitHub repository. Similarly to before, I have a binary name and a website name. <clears throat> You'll see these in the component once we get down to that bit of the code. So we're kind of going to the resources because this I think is where uh, the meat of the detail is of what we need to be able to successfully build an image from code. So first we're going to use a bucket. So the S3 bucket will be used for publishing the output logs from the machine once it's finished building. This means if something has gone wrong, you do have access to all of the log files to try and troubleshoot what went wrong. We're going to create an ECR repository. So we'll create the repository and reference this for all of the public, uh, publishing of our image. Now the EC2 instance that's launched by Image Builder uh, to build the container. So it'll launch an instance and then on the instance it will install Docker and then it will run the container in Docker on the image. Now that image itself does need IAM policies to have access for SSM and the same things that we needed for the image. And the main difference here is there's a specific managed policy for ECR container builds. So you can see I'm using the managed instance core and this image builder container builds policy. There's another policy that I'm from memory. It's called the EC2 instance profile for image builder. That is more relevant for building an image rather than building a container. These are the two required ones for use. For this example, I also need to download that S3 artifact on my website. And so I'm going to use the S3 read-only access policy. Now, if I was doing this in production, I'd probably lock this down a lot more than this policy provides. But for demo purposes, this will suffice. I'm also going to include a custom iron policy specifically to allow the publishing of my logs to that log bucket that I defined earlier. Now, if you don't provide the put object policy, there's no default policy to put those logs into S3 and so that publishing will just fail. Now we need an instance profile. We need to obviously map the role to an instance profile for my instance. And now we're kind of getting to the image builder specifics. So these are direct kind of mappings to what you saw in that console walkthrough from earlier. So this is that infrastructure configuration where you can define which instance types you want to use or where you want to put logs into S3 when you're done. 
So this is a direct mapping to that. So you can see I'm referencing my build instance type from the input parameter and my log bucket with a S3 key prefix. I can delete this comment to make sure that instance is available to me if something does go wrong. And then the subnet and security group, if they were provided, will be referenced in here. And then we can build our component. Now, the main note here is the version does need to be updated by you if you modify the content of this component. The CloudFormation resource will not automatically increment this version for you. So you will need to bump this version if you bump your CloudFormation stack. But you can see that this is the same content in the data that was seen earlier. Like this is that same component YAML format. The nice thing here is you can just build it out exactly the same as you would anywhere else. And it's very easy to read because I'm using that YAML CloudFormation template. And this is a, a Linux one, obviously not a Windows one. And so some of the key differences, for example, we have execute bash available to us on Linux. Um, this also uses a few of the additional resources that I wasn't using earlier. So just delete folder, create folder, that S3 download. And set file for permissions, which is only relevant on our Linux machine at this point. Um, that will create, obviously, execute permissions on my binary so I can execute it when I need to. And then I'll delete the downloaded tar file that I downloaded earlier in the S3 download action. So this will download the tar file, extract it to disk, configure it for execution, and we're done. It's not a whole lot going on, which is rather nice. Now for the container recipe, this is where it's very similar to the image recipe, but there's a few key differences when we're talking like the Docker file and some of those more containerized specifics. The first thing you'll note is I am using a parent image, which is an image builder managed image. So this is the ARN to my or to the AWS managed Ubuntu 18.04 image in Image Builder. Uh, I'm using the semantic version of x.x.x .x .x to indicate use the latest one of these images. Uh, you can specify a custom source such as Docker Hub. Uh, and if you do, you also need to provide this specific platform override property to specify that like this is a Linux container. Uh, there's no way for the service to know whether it's a Linux container or a Windows container. And so if you specify your own source, you do need to provide that override to tell the service what operating system you're trying to build for. Now you can see my components I'm using are update Linux. I'm installing the .NET runtime Linux from the AWS managed component as well. You can see from the AWS source here and my custom component above. Now the ordering here will be mapped to the ordering that it's executed during the build. So you have control over that order. The output, my target repository is where the image will be published after creation. We'll come down to the doc file. And so this is obviously a very key difference between the two. You can specify your doc file entirely from scratch yourself and have full control over all of it. Um, you will note there's some triple curly braces here, and these are injected by the image builder service at runtime. So this parent image will be injected based off the latest version of the parent image here. So as this version is incremented, Image Builder will handle that resolving to the latest version and will inject that latest version for you. So that's a nice one uh, to, to note. You can specify your own custom things. So obviously I'm specifying a custom environment variable and I'll specify my custom entry point. So this is just a Docker file and you have full access to everything you can do in Docker files uh, here in this recipe. Now two other replacements, are Image Builder environments. And then the components you've selected obviously will be mapped in here under components. So these are three key replacement pieces that Image Builder will handle for you. But as I mentioned, this is just a Docker file and you can add anything you want, just like you would when you're building any other Docker file. Now I'm creating a log group that maps to the default location where logs will be created. So I can have control over my retention of that log group. One note on this log group actually that I have sort of haven't mentioned before. When the image is building, uh, the logs from the on instance application will stream in real time to 
this log group. So the standard out kind of logs from your code. So if you had bash and you were echoing text to standard out, that text would be streaming in real time to the log group. So that's going to be going to become very useful for you if you want to see what's going on during build time. The distribution configuration, as I mentioned earlier, is very similar to an image, but it's slightly different when we're talking containers. The primary difference are specifying things like the target repository of where do you want the image to be published and those image tags where in this case I said latest and so you, I'll get for example a tag of 1.0.0-1 and then my latest tag will be added on top of that tag. Now the image pipeline is essentially the same as before as well. Uh, we're referencing our distribution, we're referencing that infrastructure config, I'm specifying the start condition to when any dependency update is available. So this is that sort of second checkbox that we saw earlier where as long as my source has been updated or any of my components have been updated, I will then rebuild this container at that scheduled cron expression. And then the output from this is I'm going to export a CloudFormation export um, that I could use in a subsequent template. So this will map to the full ARN of my image of my latest image tag. That's what I wanted to show here. Uh, I won't deploy this. Um, it's available on GitHub. Link later, I've said that a few times. Um, but we'll, this will be available for you to go and walk through yourselves or deploy to your accounts and have a play with it. Uh, now I'll go back to the slides and we'll wrap things up. Okay, so to wrap things up, uh, let's walk over what I've demonstrated today. So we provided a high level overview of the EC2 Image Builder service and how it can help you automate the end-to-end -end creation of secure images. We walked in detail through the pipeline workflow for both an EC2 image or an army and for a container image that you can use downstream within ECS or other container services. We outlined what the different Image Builder resources are and how they work together. Uh, for example, the recipe, the distribution configuration, the infrastructure configuration. And we showed you the component YAML format. So you can create your own custom components to install and configure software or and or to build and test instance or a Docker container. We've shown you how to access the image builder documentation, which is available at docs.aws.amazon.com slash image builder. And I know I mentioned this a number of times, but we do have a samples repository in GitHub that you can find at github.com slash AWS samples slash Amazon EC2 image builder samples. The CloudFormation template I showed you today for the container service, for sorry, for the container image and CloudFormation that will demonstrate the .NET side of that for Windows are also going to be available in that repository. So feel free to go and check that out and walk through that in your own time. That is all I have today, so thank you very much for joining me. I'm Andrew Pierce, and you can find me on Twitter at Ozstones. Thank you.